Now, you must have known then virtually every director. Well, I knew Harold McCracken very well. And as a matter of fact, he, uh, the word was out that he was writing a book on Joseph Sharp. Uh, so I came up to see him and I told him that, that I was thinking about writing a book about Sharp myself, but, but if he was going to do it, then I wouldn't. And he told me he was living in the little house over here mm -hmm. that the museum owns. And we were sitting in his library and he said, you know, Forrest, he said, I'm not going to get around to writing that book. And he said, I'd like for you to do it. Mm. So he gave me all of his sharp material, including a number of original pencil drawings, all of his, the, the bibliography, the biography that he had written. Uh, and, you know, it jump-started me into, into the sharp book. Now, what year was that, more or less? That must have been about 1982. My book came out in 1984, so it would have been 1980. When were you uh, made a member of this board of trustees? Must have been about six years ago. Six years ago. What is this? 2006. Yeah. About six years ago. Yeah, it must have been about two. The, the first winter me meeting we had was in Washington. I think that was six years ago. Okay. I'm just trying to take. Yeah. Time. Um, what other memories do you have of Harold McCracken? I asked Harold, An impression. Uh, I found him to be a very gentle man. Uh, and I asked him, when I, when I was almost through writing my short book, I, I called him on the phone and asked him if he would write the foreword to it for me. He said, yes, he would. In the meantime, he wrote the Frank Tenney Johnson book. And I had an autograph party for him in my gallery down in Santa Fe. As a matter of fact, I published with Doubleday the limited edition of Harold McCracken's book on Frank Tenney Johnson. Hmm. So, you know, I was pretty close to him. And, and uh, so now my book is, is, is finished, but I don't have the forward to my book. So I called Dr. McCracken on the phone. And I said, how are we doing on that thing? He said, well, I'm in the process right now of writing you a letter. And we talked for a minute and hung up. Mm -hmm. Three days later, I got a letter that says, Forrest, I'm in the hospital dying, and I'm not going to be able to write the forward to your book. And I have that letter bound in one of my books that I showed you yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I, I talked to uh, Fred Rosenstock into writing the forward to my book. Mm -hmm. And I love that old man. Fred Rosenstock. Now, explain who Fred Rosenstock was for posterity here. When I first started collecting books, there were I had two gods in my inventory. One of them was Fred Rosenstock, and the other was, was Jeff Dykes mm -hmm. in Washington. And uh, I didn't have any money, but, but those guys knew I liked books, and so, you know, they'd make me a deal on a book, and I'd, I'd even trade bronzes. I, I, I had more bronzes than anybody. Maybe that's why I was so broke. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, my father said one time I was so broke that I had to borrow money from a friend just to get out of debt. <laughs> but uh, that's the way it went in those days. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those were good good days. And Fred Rosenstock wrote a wonderful forward to my book. And he was an art and book dealer from Denver, Colorado. That's right. And he had a, he had a big Charlie Russell collection that he sold at South Beach. I spent many hours in, in his store on Colfax Avenue in Denver talking about books and art. And as a matter of fact, there was a book called Trail Drivers of Texas. Mm -hmm. And it had a frontispiece, was a great painting by Charles Marchand. Or was it John Marchand? Anyway, it was a great painting. And Evitz Haley was a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And I, I, had a, I had that painting, uh, and he wanted to buy it, the frontispiece to Trail Drivers of Texas. He said, if you'll find me a copy of that book, I'll buy that painting from you. So I went to see Fred Rosenstock in Denver. He said, yeah, I've got that book. He said, let's go upstairs. And this, I got in that elevator with him. My life was at great peril. 
and he started doing this thing and we went up to the second floor into what looked like an auditorium just nothing but stacks of boxes of books you never saw so much dust in your entire life and we walked down 20 rows and 15 rows of books this way he said now Forrest I haven't been in this box in 20 years but I think that book's in this box and he opened that box and there was that book laying right on top I couldn't believe it but that that says something about book dealers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Now, uh, Fred and Jeff have both passed away. How well did you know Jeff Dykes? There are legends in the book business, of course. Jeff Dykes and I were almost umbilical. And I say that because we liked each other so much. And I'd go to Washington to spend the night with him. And I'd, I'd sleep in their spare bedroom and Charlie Russell paintings around and also Fred Renner, you know, they were good friends. So we honchoed around together in, in Washington, uh, and I could always get an airplane in the Air Force and fly up there and see those guys. And uh, uh, Jeff Dax, when he got something that he thought I would like, he'd call me on the phone and sell it to me at a price that I could afford to pay, although he could have get more money for that book someplace else. But those guys kind of took care of me, you know, and you, you don't forget friends like that.